Hey everyone, in today's video, I wanna talk about burning out as an engineer, and this applies if you're an engineer at a company, but more importantly, if you are someone that is learning to code and you're trying to get your first job in the industry, I wanna show you some things that will make it so that you don't end up wasting a bunch of time um, like a lot of people are, and you can learn from our mistakes. And this was inspired by a Reddit post that I saw on CS Career Questions about someone who was a senior developer for 10 years and eventually got burned out. And I wanna try doing these commentary styles of videos a bit more more. So if you have any suggestions, I've worked in the industry for a lot of years. I've worked full time. I've worked as a contractor. If you have any questions about what it's like to work at companies or anything you might be nervous or scared about or any questions that you don't seem to find answers to about actually working in the software industry, leave them below and I might use your post as sort of a springboard for a video and touch upon that. So let's jump into this Reddit post. Um, you can see here that the post is by someone that pretty much has 10 years of experience as a senior engineer and they clearly state that they found themselves hating every single minute of it. They had a bunch of meetings around two hours every single morning of sort of frivolous meetings and then eventually it got to the point where they didn't want to go through the whole cycle of interviewing and getting leak code questions thrown at you when trying to get a new job so they eventually just stuck at the place that they were working at and it led to the point where they finally burned out and they ended up quitting. Um, and this is really sad. Um, one of the things that <clears throat> I find the saddest about the story is the fact that it took this person 10 years before they actually left um, an environment where they found themselves hating every single minute of it. If you're somewhere where you really don't like it and it's sort of a toxic environment and you just find yourself hating every day for 10 years, I personally find that it seeps in a lot to your personal life. I personally worked at a very toxic uh, workplace for around two years um, and the reason I didn't leave and it's naive looking back at it was because the compensation was very competitive and you know I was afraid that I wouldn't be able to get something and also um, the work was a lot of the times very relaxed although there would be periods where um, uh, it, a lot of it just sort of hit you at once and it was just super super toxic and the majority of that was coming from the manager um, that, wor that managed us. Um, probably one of the worst managers I've ever worked with and one of the most toxic managers I've ever worked with um, this person uh, was the epitome of you know micromanaging but um, essentially um, in my opinion the two things that lead to burnout number one uh, is the company culture slash the team you're working on um, and this relies a lot on the actual company itself I've worked at some companies that were amazing. For example, I worked at Intuit and it was probably the best company I've ever worked at. The culture was absolutely amazing. The people were amazing. Everyone cared about just growth and working as a team. And I had the uh, pleasure of meeting the CEO and the co-founder of that company. And I can honestly say, especially for bigger companies um, and a lot for smaller companies as well, culture really does come down from the top. The co-founder and the CEO of Intuit at the time that I met them were probably the most humble people I've ever met in my entire life. They were the most teamwork oriented people. And you could really tell um, that through the whole ranks of leadership, um, they really sort of uh, passed that on through their culture. And it was just one of the most amazing places to work at uh, compared to one of the other companies I worked at that was definitely not the case. So um, I think when you are looking to get a job or if you currently have a job and you're looking to switch, one of the biggest things you need to do is you need to look into the company culture before you end up accepting that offer. Um, and the two best tools I'm about to show you, number one uh, is Glassdoor. And Glassdoor is a pretty good site um, you know make sure that instead of going through jobs which is the default view you go to companies and search the company up because that is where you can actually find it and I'm gonna show you a company here that uh, um, that is has a lot of big red flags um, I actually one of my friends knew someone that interviewed uh, for this company um, and you know the class store doesn't look too bad um, when you just look at it right now but as I go through some of these reviews you'll see where the big red flags are and I'll tell you a story about someone who actually interviewed and actually brought up all these reviews in the actual interview itself so you can see here that only around it's a bit of a smaller company you can see that there's not very many reviews and if you were look, to look this up on TechCrunch you'll see that there's maybe less than around 200 employees at this company and when only 68 percent of people approve of the CEO at a very small company that's actually a huge deal because a lot of the times the CEO is going to be interacting with employees uh, directly it's not going to be like Amazon where you know you might never even like hear Jeff Bezos other than you know his once a year talk to the entire company um uh, this is uh, already sort of a really big red flag and you can see a lot of the positive reviews uh, the, a lot of the five-star reviews here are sort of just really placeholder e like great team and cons oh there's a lot to do um, oh yeah uh, the start of life can be a bit hectic and stuff like that but then when you actually look at the bad reviews you can see that these are actual people that list out entire reasons 
of why that they didn't like uh, working at this company and huge problems that the company has. Um, and you can see it's a lot, you know, more comprehensive than maybe just, you know, oh, you know, one of the cons is there's just so much to do and, you know, you can really make yourself a good engineer if you keep up with the hectic workplace. Um, and I'm not going to read through this entire bad review, but essentially a lot of it has to do with the C-level suite, um, people lying to investors, lying to employees, lying to customers, then promising things to their employees that never came true. Um, you know, the intermediate level management also being uh, held to work with because they are under pressure from the C-level execs, which just means the CEO, CTO, CFO, um, stuff like that. And um, you can really go ahead and see that a lot of these uh, negative reviews sort of have sort of the same strand as well. A lot of them say the same things as each other. Um, and a lot of them are sort of posted, uh, you know, in different time periods as well. It's not like they were all posted. So anyways, the story is I knew a friend who knew a friend who interviewed for this company. And when this person brought up the fact that there were so many Glassdoor negative reviews, um, the CEO actually uh, offered to talk to the uh, person that was interviewing for the company and try to explain why there were so many negative uh, reviews at, on Glassdoor for this company. And this person ended up um, talking to the CEO and the CEO pretty much just tried to explain uh, the situation away by saying that, um, you know, something about these two employees who didn't want to go on, va on vacation with the company, obviously because of COVID, um, they felt that, you know, it was a bad idea, which in my opinion, I think it sort of was a bad idea. Um, they said that they got really angry and they decided to quit and make a bunch of fake accounts on Glassdoor and leave all these negative reviews. Um, and that's sort of a really big red flag right there. The CEO did not, you know, try to talk about any of the actual points. He just said, yeah, it's all garbage. It's all fake news. Pretty much the employees that left uh, wanted to, you know, go ahead and um, <laughs> uh, t say all these different things. So um, that is an example of something you should be weary about. And um, I've also seen some threads on Reddit that are as flattering for different companies as well. And these are sort of the types of sites you want to really be looking at. Um, because even, you know, unless you're in a really dire situation where you really have to accept a job fast, it might be worth the extra one or two months of interviewing to avoid two to five years of working at a company that sort of makes your life a living hell. Um, and another uh, good part of Glass, uh, Glassdoor is, you know, for bigger companies, you can really get a sense of the average salary. So you can see here they have 181,000 salaries. Uh, you can sort by engineers or if you're going to product management or business or anything like that. Another great site. And by the way, if you don't want to make a, uh, an account on Glassdoor, you can use this site called bugmenot.com. And bugmenot will essentially um, allow you to just get a fake, um, you know, username and password that you can use and log in. So I personally use this one. Uh, because if you're not logged in on Glassdoor, sometimes they hide reviews and force you to like make an account and all that stuff. The next one um, is Blind. And Blind is really cool because they make everyone uh, sign up with their work email. So it's sort of hard to fake uh, being a, an employee at one of these companies, unless you know, you're able to get a hold of a friend's uh, email that works at this company. Um, and you can see here that a lot of engineers at different companies, and not just engineers, but people that work at these different companies, will um, sort of make a Reddit post. It's sort of like a Reddit for each individual company. So you can see like all the popular companies that people like posting about. You can see sort of the ratings and how people like to work there. Um, and if you come over here, uh, you can see, uh, if you click on one of them, you can like sort of look at posts. You can look at salaries. It's sort of like another glass door, uh, but a bit more, uh, you know, uh, legitimate. So you can see like, for example, if you go to posts, you can see like Reddit posts about people talking about like uh, why it's good to work at Amazon or PIP means performance improvement plan. So um, apparently a lot of people lately have been being put on, you know, uh, PIP is sort of like if you are about to get fired, this is like the last step they do to try and like uh, get you um, to sort of perform better. Um, and they put you on sort of a plan and stuff like that and try to keep you accountable. But apparently there's a lot about a, a lot going about that. Um, right now at Amazon, which is why you see a bunch of posts. But, you, but, you know, uh, Blind is a really, really good uh, way to get the inside scoop. And a lot of the times, some people on Blind might be a bit more salty than the average person. I found that at some companies I've worked at, um, when I signed up on Blind and looked on Blind, uh, a lot of the people were complaining about things that I didn't personally experience. But again, a lot of the times it could also differ depending on the team you're on. You might have an amazing manager that makes working there an absolute pleasure, or you might have a manager that doesn't really know what they are doing and it is really tough to work there. But those are the two greatest tools I would recommend 
recommend. Um, because like I said, I think burnout has a lot to do uh, with actually the company you work on and the team you are with. And I find myself, even if I'm working on sort of a technology that I'm not that passionate about or don't really enjoy that much, if the team is amazing, I'm going to have a good time working there. Um, and that is pretty much it. Like I said, if you have any other questions about what it's like to work at these workplaces or any tools you can use, leave them in the comments. I'll try to make an entire video about some uh, really good comments that you guys leave. And if you found value, make sure you also leave a comment because it helps with the algorithm. But make sure you subscribe and, uh, you know, hit that notifications bell. And I'll see you guys in the next video.